Once we install the main controller, uh, the next step is to add the router. Before we do that, uh, every main controller, uh, once we install it, we also need to give it a name. In our case, let's go see what kind of name. As you can see, this is the name we gave. This is just the sample name uh, of our main controller. Now this is useful because once you uh, there may be more than one controllers in a neighborhood, so it would be very he helpful um, to give it a meaningful name. For example, the name of the street or whatever. Now I've just programmed the uh, the router. This is the first time it's starting up. It's searched. For, for an available uh, network to join and as you can see it found it found the, the name now let's restart this port again just to show you it searches for one okay it finds uh, the network and it asks if you want to join so let, let's say yes turn off the light maybe it'll be easier to see okay all right, the next step is to give this router a name. Now, this name is only used when uh, this system is in the neighborhood watch mode, uh, so that if something goes wrong, this is the name that your neighbors will see. So you probably want to give it a meaningful name as well. But in this case, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to name it ABC. Okay, so now this module is done uh, with registration. Now uh, we can do two things. One, if you have already powered up any end device modules. In this case I have one that's powered up and needs to be registered. We can go ahead and try the registration. In this case, let's try to do that. So, uh, one of the options is it automatically searches for any available end device that's still orphaned and hasn't been joined by any network. In this case, we say automatically search. Okay, so as you can see, it's not finding anything. Why? Simple, because there, <laughs> I don't have a and device module on but uh, let's for fun let's let's actually program one so I'm coming here and I'm programming a fresh oh, I have to turn it on okay so this is the unregistered end device obviously this is the prototype so it's saying waiting to register. Now let's let's try this one more time. See, it finally found found uh, this system, this end device. The name that you see right now, um, it, these names will be unique to each uh, end device module, and they will be much more meaningful than this test one one. Um, for example, if uh, the end device is actually a thermostat, you will be seeing a therm or thermostat 97, depending on what the unique ID is. So there, they, they will be unique names. Now we know it's test uh, test one one. We want to add it. So now we have the option to choose whatever name we want to choose. Now this is very important because this is how we will be addressing this end device module this is the name that we're gonna use when we send our text message so it's definitely we want to have something that is meaningful obviously I'm gonna do something that's not so meaningful but um, it should be good enough for now I'm gonna name this triple A 
Okay, so now uh, the end device module registers successfully. And while well, I'm displaying the AAA name. By the way, all these communications are being done uh, via Zigbee wirelessly. So it's asking me if I want to add any more devices. At this time, I don't want to. Now the system is ready to go. If, if I restart it one more time, it actually updates the time as well. It grabs the time from the main controller. Now I have to add one line of code so that it does it automatically without uh, me having to reset the system. Now the next step is to add a phone number. Because each router needs to uh, have at least one phone number associated to it. Because the way the system works is that once a text message is received by the central module, it, it goes and looks up a table to see if that phone number is associated to any router. If, if it is, then it will route the message to the appropriate router. If it's not, it will ignore the message because it assumes that the message is not, the sender is not an authorized sender. We also have another option where, where uh, you can, uh, you can use a, N a number that's not on the registered list. However, if you provide a password, then it will route the no route the message based on the password. So I, that that feature has not been Im implemented yet, but it's a pretty easy uh, implementation. So, um, uh, in case if you're wondering how I'm typing, uh, this is a capacitive touch circuit board. A keypad and it's connected to, to this. You see, uh, the F3 option is add remove phone. I can add a phone, I can remove a phone, I can edit a phone, I can do a variety of things. In this case, I'm gonna add a phone. So I'm gonna add my phone number. One second. I'm typing my phone number right now. Okay, so the phone is now registered with the central module. And uh, one of the options is if I want to test the connection. So Here's my phone number right here. We say, yeah, sure, let's test the connection. Okay. So now a test message was sent to my cell phone. I should uh, receive it shortly. If I don't get it, that means I probably typed my phone number incorrectly. And indeed, uh, I get a text message from this uh, uh, controller that says it's a test message. That concludes our demonstration for the registration process of the router and the end devices. Again, as always, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any comments, please feel free to com uh, co uh, contact me. Thanks.